uh, it's something I think all players struggle with, and that's what, what makes the guys that continuously perform so amazing. So here we are with the young guy. Uh, well, no, this is the other guy, actually. <laughs> In the lower left-hand side, the blue Zerg. It's the American Zerg Cicada, or Cicada. Daniel Morgan. Never trust a guy with two first names. Ever. You know, pretty much no matter how you pronounce Cicada, someone will yell at you in chat. It's Cicada. Yeah. Spawning up here at the top right, we have our red Terran player. He is the future North America. Joseph Stonish. 16 years young. That's half my age. <laughs> Fit two of him inside of my lifespan. He's pretty tall. Well, oh, in lifespan. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. I'll let you sit on that one for a second. No. Also, uh, that. Did you think I was saying fit two of him inside of my body? You know, I started my rebuttal before you finished yeah. the sentence. I'll tell you what, Fear Dragon, we got to keep an eye on you. DJ Perplexer caught you with that <laughs> reference to uh, a certain code name, <laughs> and now you're talking about 16-year-old boys inside of Jeff's body. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> got to keep our eye on you. Is there no spawning pool here yet? Uh, there there is, is a spawning pool. Let's yeah. just get started. All right. Can you show it, please, so you can confirm it? <laughs> Thank you very much. There you go. <laughs> okay. I feel very needy right now. I just needed to see it. Uh, uh, my favorite part is that you do have your own server PC. <laughs> that you just refuse to No, use. I need you to show me. I don't need to show uh, myself. You need to make sure the audience sees it. That's right. That's fair. That's who I'm caring for here. Okay. Uh, so he did open non... Uh, Reaper for a lot of his other best of three against True, which he, I think Nate and I kind of, just to reiterate, he was probably ahead in all three games and only getting one of the wins, so that's got to be a tough one to come back from, to your point, Ruby. Yeah, uh, kind of closing out victories is oftentimes one of the ways that we end up seeing kind of what I was talking about, sort of surface, uh, where players tend to struggle a little bit after things stop going their way, or they kind of get a little too tense about like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm about to win this versus a favored player. But this game, I do want to give some favoritism to Future. I do I do think that he is probably the player a lot of players would expect to win this. Okay. Cicada is absolutely capable of beating Future, though. Nice. So you kind of said nothing, I suppose. <laughs> I, I, I said that I think that Future has a better shot. People think he'll win, but just so you know, <laughs> the other guy can too. Uh, I will say we had asked for feedback on this from our lovely viewing audience, and some people did give me some feedback on Twitter that we kind of talked about on this map taking the natural that, whoa, I just knocked my headset off, uh, <laughs> that is in the back of your base or taking the one in the front. And uh, some of the points that were put forward that if you take the one in the back, it's much better against like a two rack. So against like a Mosser or something like that, it can be mm -hmm. safer and nice. And then some guys tried to make the point, something about how if you take this one later, it's better against Hellion. But I kind of think that was wrong. Now, admittedly, they did say they were NAGMs, which for the grand scheme of things, puts them at about platinum in Europe. So it's a good attempt. I do like the two racks logic though. I think that makes sense. Okay, Reaper makes his way into the main base. Is ah, dead. Yeah, not going to be able to scout out too much. I mean, he does not see a Roach Warren or anything, which I assume is why he was kind of trying to go yeah, really go for things. That's yeah, maybe a little bit concerned because, you know, again, Cicada does have a bit of a reputation as being someone who does like to throw out a lot of all-ins. Hmm. Um, it's kind of similar to actually how Future, I think, also being someone who's sort of infamous for going for proxy two racks or proxy three racks a lot of the time, which is probably why Cicada also maybe playing a bit around that sometimes. Like, Masa has a reputation for being proxy. True has a reputation for being hyper aggressive. Wait a second. Is this NAWCS? <laughs> Hold the phone. Well, hey, hang on. We'll, we'll see Semper at some point, I'm sure. Actually, he, we won't, right? Or is oh. he qualified? Actually, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Puck, Puck is not known for. Did you do that elements. yesterday too? You were like, I believe, and the guy was already eliminated. We we're like, ah. No, yesterday I, I like, said I believe in Namshar, and then he made uh, it out. Okay, fair he, enough. Uh, so, yeah. You believed. That's a lot of Hellions. Is there an army? There's got to be an army. Uh, no army, but you know, Future has been going for Mech a lot in these games. Well, I just so. mean Hellbats right now. I don't. I almost. I feel like if you make that much, that many Hellions. It's just a third CC for now, so no yeah. no armory yet. I assume one will come down eventually. 
I love this with the Raven. There it is. Yeah, this is really cool. Was it Mom who was doing this yesterday? Was that Masa? Uh, what? Terror? I don't. It, well, I think I think Masa did it a bit, but it was mainly Hero Marine that we were it was seeing. Hero Marine was yeah. doing this. I liked it. And there's the double armory going into the mech play, so he can turn these into Hellbats eventually. Don't leave it though. Oh my goodness. Got to be careful of the control on that. He picks off all the active creep tumors and might actually be able to pick off some more of these active ones. Goes for the focus fire. Doesn't quite get the second one. They're not quite active. What would you call that? Would you call that a fetus tumor or like a... A fetus tumor would still be active, right? Because it's still building. It's That's actively a building. That's Ravi, we're getting into some interesting <laughs> territory there, aren't we? This is getting a little too political. A little too political? <laughs> Mark's on the phone right now. He's like, <laughs> no! Keep it StarCraft! Oh, you know what, gonna... though? StarCraft was a political game, if you think about it. The whole Confederacy, Jim Rayner, is he in love with Kerrigan or is he not? How is that political? Uh, loves a, war a battlefield? I'll let that one go. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll take it. I'm not surprised you let love go, Ruby. <laughs> Yeesh. <laughs> this is a good map for Mech, though, because you can take a lot of bases and hold on to them pretty well. You got that pocket base, so you have that... Establish. You're going to get your uh, third base, right? The one below your main. There's no way that... I mean, if, if you're not holding that one, then things are going pretty bad. Uh, Hellions, for the most part, they're doing a good job of denying a lot of the active creep tumors, but it... Pack of queens. Ugh. It's gotta be, it, it is funny to try and deny creep when they have six queens literally just <laughs> spreading creep. It's like... It feels like you give up on it. It it kind feels of, like you're not doing anything. Yeah, but at the same time, if you do give up on it, then your opponent gets to your natural. You have creep mm. there, and then you say, "Oh, I can actually never push out." This is a po kind of a problem. That's when you start to deny the creep. <laughs> then you don't get to call it denying the creep. You call it like I don't even know what you call that. Playing catch up, mitigating on creep. the creep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of auditors coming down, but that raven oh. is getting awfully low on hit points. Uh. Viking with that 10 extra oh. health after the patch, by the way. More healthy than it would have been otherwise. You know what I mean? By about 10. Thank you, Tasteless. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you're getting it. That's right. Yeah. See, I feel bad because I I'm, I don't have like the 10-year, the 15-year long history no, you're of doing Tasteless. It. So. That's fine. All right. Nick's been casting before time itself, though. He's old time bones. He's a... <laughs> old time Some bones. people feel like when like the first fire was made, Nick was there commentating it. And that is about the level of his commentary, too. It's like, wow, the fire is <laughs> appearing, and it is a fire. Over to you, Dan. And Dan's like, uh. no. All right. Well, Nick, a lot Nick's of He's not watching this because his hand's broken, by the way. We're <laughs> safe to make these jokes. <laughs> All right. A lot of the Hellions are going to oh, be looking forward. Ooh, nice anti armor I don't, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if this is still going to work out that well for future. I don't like it. Not this. I, you know, I'm not going to make it like 10 minutes of criticism, but... Uh, Losing the Raven frivolously for that, like that, just kind of bothers me because <gasps> that Dorito Cannon later is such a big deal. You hit the center mass of an army, it completely <laughs> transforms the battle. I do like this though, because you have to remember, he did pull all of the Hydras over to the north side the to help deal drop. with the Hellions, and now these Thors, uh, the Medivacs are staying alive. The Thors have killed off almost all the Queens. He saves oh. the low health Thor as well. Don't do it. You know it's going to die. Oh. You know it's going to die. No. Oh. Yeah. No. Okay, good. I was right. <laughs> Jeez, the Queen, though, in the end. They're on opposite sides of that one. I can't believe he tried to save that. All right. Hellbats don't quite have Blue Flame. They're about to get it in about 10 seconds, but they're going to die before it actually finishes up. Still getting little bits and pieces of damage on. He killed off. Oh, my God. He's going to move back in with a low health Thor. Are you kidding? Future. Uh, you're, you're playing with fire right now. You have one hit home. point on that Thor. Take it home. <laughs> it's a hero. Oh my Celebrate god. Celebrate its life, not its death. It's like the veteran that you s decide to draft back into war after it's like 50 years old. Yeah. Uh, that, Greater Spire on the way pretty quick. It's a Mel Gibson Vietnam uh, movie. The thin red line, right? Or remember, it's before your time. Yeah, I'm just I'm just not as like movie aware as you. Yeah. I feel like this happens every single time we cast, is that you make like four movie references that I don't know. To be fair, uh, you're not alone. It's like most of the, it's most of the StarCraft II commentator group uh, doesn't watch enough. movies. They're all like, especially if you, if you do it around Roddy or something like that, it gets even Oh, well, Roddy just watches soccer. That's pretty much all he watches. Yeah. Does get repaired though. Yep. Which is nice. I'm still sad about the Raven though, because notice, and this is, Terran players almost never remake a Raven. Like, once they swap off that tech lab, never again. And it, it, it's so good against creep. Again, like I said, the anti-armor missile is a big deal. I'm sad. Yeah, it's part of the, actually the reason. It's it's a small part of the reason, not a huge part, but 
I do like a lot of the Terran players that do uh, like to mix in the late game Banshees and they'll get a couple of them up and they'll just keep continuously keep some of them and if you do lose something like a Raven you could reproduce yeah because you still got the tech lab on the uh, starport yeah I'm just okay with like two starport at this point in time anyways because then when you know because the the hard counter to this is Broodlords but then if you show up with your 10 Vikings that can be a great answer but the other answer too is Vipers and you know, Terrans try to skimp that a little bit. They always have like five or six Vikings, which is enough. Don't get me wrong, but I, I like it when you're just one tapping them and really shutting down Viper play. Because I feel like if you don't have Vipers or Broodlords, then Mech just reigns supreme. Okay, but this is the first committed push from Future. He is not just Hellbats or Hellions. He oh. is moving in with the Sea Chase. He's sieging up and actually, yeah, catching Cicada right before he was maybe going to yeah. think about moving in. He thought about it. He kind of pump faked all of us. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's Broodlords coming out already. Broodlords are going to cause a lot of problems because there are a handful of Vikings, but like you said, there's not that many. There's some Thors in high impact payload mode. Can get some damage done, but here we go. Lings come flooding on forward. The Hellbats holding the line for a little bit, but not that long. And Cicada, the Blinding Clouds, yeah. absolutely storms through this army. Very well done. Uh, it's a combination of all those things. You let the Broodlings kind of go ahead and start to aggro a lot of the fire from that mech army and then committed his actual units. Blinding Clouds, as you said, carpeting the high damage points of that gun line. Now, the good thing here for Future behind this is he did secure a fourth base. Um, and he's getting a pretty seamless economy going. He's taking no harass on his side of things. But he loses that fight. And as a mech player, when you lose a fight, it's a lot like Protoss with their kind of big, clunky, expensive army. If you lose that, you're in a lot of trouble. So he's got to find a way to bounce back here. Well, this fifth base probably, I mean, as long as Cicada realizes that it's there, it should that not be able to go up. fetal base, as we established earlier, right? Yeah, and uh, I don't think that's going to be an active that? fetal base for very much longer. Okay. You <laughs> You're looking for trouble, aren't you, over there, Ruby? Okay, well, here's the fight, and I don't see it going the way of future. <laughs> Tapping out Cicada! Showing that he, too, can win some games. <laughs> what a savage way of putting it. Yeah. Well, it's his first game he won, right? Uh, he took... Let's see. He played versus... True... No. Future huh. played versus... Yeah. This is a series ah, yeah, you just cast right. literally moments right. before this. It's been a long day, Jeff. <laughs> this wasn't a bunch of 2 hours. Longer today. for some, I suppose. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> but, of course, like you said, Cicada going to be putting one on the board in a very important match because this is an elimination match. Yeah. Loser of this series is going to get knocked out of WCS Challenger and no chance of making it to those playoffs. And the winner will advance to lose to either Puck or True as well. So it's going to be well, a lot on the line. Probably, right? Maybe. Here's the thing. <laughs> Both of those players are known for being highly inconsistent. Ah. And especially True just apparently woke Fair up enough. right before his match. Sometimes plays like a legend. Sometimes plays like a little bit of a clown. Oh, wow. And I think especially I would actually give Future a pretty decent chance of maybe making it out of that. Well, he's got, really, you give him a decent chance because he's down 0-1. He <laughs> he is, he is, is down 0-1. If he goes on to that uh, yeah. decider match, I would say he's probably bounced back mentally from any kind of like uh, losses that he's had earlier on in the day, and I'd say he probably has a decent chance. He would have won two to make it to that hypothetical possible future. You're right. Mm -hmm. But he's got quite the road ahead of him. Cicada here with a fairly dominant early, uh, game one win, excuse me, it's just kind of a... Good patience, by the way. A lot of times when you're facing mech, you do see players kind of over-engage, jump in there a little bit too early, waited for those Broodlords to finish morphing, waited until they had energy on the Vipers, and then used mm -hmm. all of it at once to win the decisive victory and push onward for the win. So it's good to see from our young players trying to make a name for themselves. Kate, also a young guy, by the way. He's in yeah. college. Uh, I was kind of checking his Twitter to, to confirm that he is who I thought he was. <laughs> and uh, he is, but he's a young guy trying to turn a new leaf, and he's making a little bit of a run here in WCS. Just qualifying is good, by the way. Yeah. It's, it's something that uh, I've always liked about the WCS system is each time in Challenger, we kind of see a new name. Um, and then sometimes we get those miraculous results. I think back to yesterday with Group A, mm -hmm. uh, we all knew Sarah was going to advance, but we saw Hero Marine in there. And we're like, okay, well, Hero Marine's going to advance too, right? Wrong! It's Namsher who's going to be in those playoffs. And now he's just a couple of games away from possibly booking himself a flight over to Valencia. Not bad. Yeah. Like Will one of these guys join him, Ruby? No, well, probably not. <laughs> but maybe, right? But maybe. Spawning down here in the bottom left, we have our blue Zerg player sitting up one and zero in this best of three. It is Cicada. 
I don't know why he's speaking German. I'm pretty sure that is German, right? Guten Lucan. I'm not sure because I don't, I don't know if future Uven is Poonen. part German. It's a wonderful well, question about American players. We were almost all part German, weren't we? Almost all of us. Yeah, Jeff. Not all of us. Almost. Almost. Spawning fan at the top right, we have our red Terran player. He is future. Good old Rise Esports. He always never responds. That's the part that's like making this a little funny. For me. <laughs> it's like Cicada last game said the same thing, and Future's just like, "Yeah, Geo, <laughs> let me play this game here." Yeah. So you said you've had some experience with him, right? Have you? Has he been on your show, or has he been Future? Yeah, interviewed uh, or anything? Yeah. So if I, I've talked a lot with Future. He actually is very open with his thoughts. I think a lot of the time, oh, and cool. he is definitely one of those players. He's like, he is. I well, think he's very 16. Ex huh? He's very yeah. young. Yeah, he's 16. He was very, very excited to get in part of the WCS system because he's been playing StarCraft for a good while. That's actually the funny thing. You talk about Clem and Raynor and Future, and you always say, like, oh, yeah, they finally get to move into the WCS circuit. But the funny thing is none of them just kind of showed up and said, you know, this StarCraft game seems like something I want to give a, a shot. Yeah, it's like all of them have been playing for four or five years wow. or something. Since they were 11 or 10 years old, geez. <laughs> What were you doing when you were 10 years old? Um, 10 years old, I was way into Legos, spawn action okay. figures. Um, I used to go out in the woods with a stick and like fight sticker bushes and stuff like that. Sticker and, bushes? Yeah, sticker bushes. And I'm not even making this up either. I'm, what is a sticker bush? You never, you never heard that sticker bush? No. Uh, it's like any of the bush. It's like obviously not a scientific name, but it's any bush that had like thorns or was spiky. Any kind of that stuff. So you'd be fighting plants? Yeah. Huh. Oh, I think I can I can kind of see. When I was 10 years yeah. old, this was 1995. I was listening to Soundgarden, Alice in mm. Chains, Stone Temple Pilots, Nirvana. We had Super Soaker fights. Did you okay. have Super yeah. Soaker fights in your course. childhood? Everyone still. I think you still have Super Soaker fart fights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had towards, and you know, you only had them until you know you had to stop when you're like 13 or something like that. Did you? Yeah, well, you didn't yeah. have to, but there's like a social contract where it gets a little bit weird when you're 14 and you're shooting kids that are five years younger than you with Super Soakers. But I, I had the big, the Super Soaker cannon. I think it was called the 2000. You literally filled the entire thing up, and it only had one shot in it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you hit somebody with that, they were drenched. It was awesome. Isn't that just a water balloon? <laughs> no, it was, it was like a water cannon. It had good range on it, too. Okay. It was pretty cool. I'm sure some of the chat's being pretty nostalgic because it was... Uh, woo, hold on, hold on. I want to actually interrupt you and talk about this game for a moment because we do have Future not really getting too much of a scout right now, and there is just nothing but non-stop <gasps> Lings flooding out. Lings speed about to finish up. Whoa! And Future does have the uh, low ground expansion, and is he going to be actually prepared? He did go for reactor barracks after this. He didn't go into the Hellions. Yeah, so here we go. You guys wanted some NA StarCraft. Here it comes. All right, this is going to be a very important scout and realization for future. Does he get the Marines into a safe spot? If he can just sacrifice the natural and oh, just kind of lift up the him. command center. Oh, my God. He's using a few links to draw the Marines out. This is so sick. Yeah, he just baited him. Wow. That's as good of an angle as it gets oh. the Marines, but it's not going to be good enough. They're all going to die. Uh, they were barely uh, not quite fully walling off that little area. So they get fully surrounded there and in a matter of seconds. The full wall off is there, but there's a one Marine on the other side. Is there a ban He would have sent Lings up to hold down the depot while doing that. I would have been uh. very impressed. Okay, Reaper tried to move in for a moment. Thought maybe it was getting some damage done, but nope, there are three Queens out. There's a third hatchery now getting started up. Cicada is looking phenomenal in this game. Even picks off the Reaper with those speed links. You know what? I don't even mind that my Super Soaker story was interrupted by this StarCraft <laughs> gameplay. Uh, I'm going to allow it. Oh, boy. I, I can't believe he came I back down. I made him out again. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, actually, oh. you're actually just going to die. Oh, that's that's it. You just you can't actually defend this anymore. GT, Cicada, wow. two zeros, future. Who's on to that decider match? So you're kind of talking.